So here we're asked to find the magnitude of the total force that's applied to the post. So we can see that we've got uh, three different forces here. Essentially what we need to do to find the total is calculate the resultant of those three forces added together. And once we've got that, we should then be able to compute what the magnitude of that resultant actually is. Now, unfortunately, it's not very easy to add and subtract vectors when they're express, expressed sorry, in a magnitude and direction form. So what we need to do is convert each of these back to vector form so that we're able to add them uh, together relatively easily. And then once we've got a total um, expressed in vector form, that's where we go and convert it to, to a magnitude. So let's start off by focusing on our force F1. If I bring it over here and draw it, it's 200 in terms of the length of the hypotenuse. And we know that it's made up of a horizontal and a vertical component here. So I'm going to call it F1x and F1y. And we'll pop in, we've got the angle here of 45 degrees. And we know it's going to be a right angled triangle because the x and y axes are 90 degrees to each other. So if we want to figure out how big uh, the length is of each of these sides, we can use sine, cos, and tan. So I'll start by picking cos, which we know is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So if we're focusing on this angle here, the adjacent to it is going to be the F1x. So cos 45 is equal to F1x. Oop, there we go. And the hypotenuse is the longest side, so that's going to be the 200. So F1x is equal to 200 times cos of 45. And as a decimal approximation from the calculator, that's 141.4. So we can now go ahead and do sine in order to work out the length of the other side. So we know that sine is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So focusing on our angle of 45 degrees, the opposite to it is the F1y, and the hypotenuse is still 200. So if we do 200 times sine of 45, uh, what we end up with is, again, actually, 141.4 um, as a decimal approximation for its length. So now what we want to do is express it in vector form where we think about the directions that our um, arrows are pointing. So remember that this is being referenced against our Cartesian uh, coordinate system where we've got a positive x-axis pointing to the right and a positive y-axis pointing upwards. So if we consider our x component here, all right, which we know has a length of 141.4, we can see this is pointing in the negative x direction. So therefore, it's going to get a negative and an i uh, associated with it. If we now look at the vertical component here, we know it's got a length of 141.4 and it's pointing upwards. So therefore, it's going to get a plus when we pop it into this vector form. So we've successfully converted this one here to go from a magnitude and direction into a uh, vector um, form where we have a horizontal and a vertical component. So let's go ahead and do the same thing now for F2. So this one looks like this. We know that the hypotenuse here has a length of 300 uh, newtons, and we can divide it into a horizontal and a vertical part. So we'll do it like this. So let's call this F2x and this F2y, and we can mark in our angle here of being 60 degrees. All right, so we need to figure out the length um, of F2x and F2y. I'm going to do this again by doing cos of our angle as a starting point. So if we do cos of 60 degrees in this case, we end up with the adjacent side, which is F2x, divided by the hypotenuse, which has a length of 300. So if we rearrange 300 times cos of 60, this works out to 150. So now let's go ahead and figure out the vertical side, which I can get from doing sine. So again, focusing on our 60 degrees, we end up with the opposite, which is F2y divided by the hypotenuse, which is, oops, sorry, 300, not 3,000. So 300 times sine of 60, 
uh, works out to 259.8. Okay, so we've worked out the size of this um, side. So now what we want to do is put it back into a, a vector form where we have the horizontal and vertical parts. So this is our horizontal part and we can see it's pointing in the positive x direction. So when we pop it into vector form, it's going to get a positive i associated with it. We can see for the vertical part here, it's pointing downwards, which is the negative y direction. So it's going to get a minus when it's popped in. So that becomes our vector uh, form of that particular um, force. So we've got one left, okay, which is F3 down the bottom, and this one's actually quite easy. So this one we don't even really need to draw a triangle for because you can see that it's really only got a horizontal component. It doesn't have any vertical component, so we can just visually um, see where it's pointing and the size of it. So I would say this only has an x component, which is pointing in the negative x direction. So when we put it into vector form, it should get a negative i associated with it. All right, since it has no y component, it would be like plus zero j, which I'm just gonna leave off. All right, so we've now got a vector representation for F1, F2, and F3. And what we now need to do is figure out the total force, which is the resultant. So, I'm going to call my resultant FR and all we need to do is add the three forces together and because we've converted to vector form it should be pretty easy. So F1 was this here, so negative 141.4i plus 141.4j. F2 is this, so we add 150 and take 259.8j. And then finally we add on F3, which is negative 250i. So we should be able to now combine the i components together. So putting together these three terms, it comes to negative 241.4. And putting the two j um, parts together that we have, it comes to negative 118.4. So this here, all right, has the units of newtons. That's our uh, resultant force, all right, from adding all three of these together. All right, this is what the total can be expressed as in terms of a horizontal and a vertical part. Now, we weren't actually asked for the vector form, okay? What we were asked for specifically was the magnitude of this vector. So, we just need to go ahead and convert it over. Sometimes it helps to draw us the little triangle. So I'm going to pop in here, all right, this is my negative x component, so it's got a length of 241.4, and then I've got a negative y component, so it's going to go down 118.4. So overall, okay, this here, fr, is my resultant, um, the magnitude, sorry, of my resultant force, and because I have a right angled triangle here, I should be able to get out its length by applying Pythagoras theorem. So for that, we do the square root of our two components squared and added together. And this becomes 268.9 and the units are newtons, which is just a unit of force. So that's the overall answer to the question. We weren't asked about what the direction was that this force was acting in, um, but if you uh, were keen, you could always go back and find it. So that's all there is.